Today we are talking about Psalm 20. It's good to know a background of these Psalms. Psalms that many people, most of us enjoy. What is the background? As you all know, most of the Psalms were written by David. David became a king when he was a young man. Imagining King Charles, King Charles at the age of 40 becoming a king in UK. So David was young. Psalm 20 talks about the assurance of God's saving work. To know that in David's time, you ought to know God, to know this type of things, the assurance of God's saving work. So Psalm 20 is a prayer for victory in battle. Now, let me come in again on this issue. Psalms 20 and 21 are called companion psalms. Companion psalms. And um, Psalm 20 should be read song on behalf of the king as he was about to go to war. While Psalm 21 is to be sung after he has victoriously returned. So I'm not talking about Psalm 21, but I'm not telling you that Psalms 20, 21 are companion Psalms for worship. So this prayer for victory in battle in Psalm 20, you sing it before the king goes to war. Such a prayer can help us prepare for any great challenge. David knew that trust should be placed in the Lord more than in human power at that young age. The events in 2 Samuel 10 may have prompted this prayer. So we're going to go to 2 Samuel 10. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanon, the son of Nahash. See, the king of this king died, and he was a friend to David. So when he died, the son was mourning. So David sent to combat. Comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. Are you with me, George? So it's a pity you can't see my slides, but they were dressed hmm, because they were ambassadors to King David to come and mourn the loss of his father. The Ammonite noble said to Hanon, their Lord, do you think David is honoring your father by sending men to you to express sympathy? Hasn't David sent them to you to explore the city and spy it out and overthrow it? Therefore, Hanon took David's servants, shaved off half of their birds, cut off their garments in the middle and their buttocks and sent them away. Now, it's left to your imagination. So you imagine your dress being caught in the middle, showing your underwear. You, you cannot go like this back to your country. This is humiliation at its greatest form. When they told David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, wait at Jericho until your bears have grown and then return. The bears were shed half, the garments were coming too. So you cannot hold the garments to begin to walk, no. In ancient times as now, the office of ambassador was held secret. By the universal law of nations, it ensured protection from personal violence or insult. The ambassador standing as a representative of his sovereign, any indignity offered to him demanded prompt retaliation. The Ammonites, knowing that the insult offered to Israel will surely be avenged, made preparation for war. Can you imagine? How many times your good intentions have, have, been, have been misconstrued? David sent a delegation to, to comfort. Look at how they were humiliated and insult. When the Ammonites realized that they had become a stench 
in David's nostrils that have become odious to the Israelites. They hired 20,000 Aramean foot soldiers from Beth Rebel, Herbal, and Zobah, as well as the king of Maka with 1,000 men and also 12,000 men from Tob. On hearing this, David sent Joab out with an entire army of fighting men. Then the Syrians fled before Israel and David killed 700 charioteers and 40,000 horsemen of the Syrians and struck Shobak, the commander of the army who died there. And when all the kings who were servants to Hadadezer saw that they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians were afraid to help the people of Ammon anymore. I don't know whether any of you have been privileged to represent your president to represent your country. I have represented my country. I have been sent out with some other people and we know the type of um, reception we got. Red carpet in the best hotels in the world. Then you can imagine reaching there, then somebody say, no, you are a spy. Then they mistreat you, it's, it's impossible. So <clears throat> it was a hostile but fruitless alliance. Then there was formed against the king of David, a vast coalition of the surrounding nations, out of which grew the greatest wars and victories of his reign and the most ex extensive accessions to his power. This hostile alliance, which really sprang from jealousy of David's increasing power, had been wholly unprovoked by him. So Psalm 20, back to Psalm 21 to 5, you see the background now. David has been insulted, humiliated. So in Psalm 20 verses 1 to 5, he says, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your bond sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. How many of us have knelt on the bed? in our homes, in the church, when your good intentions have led to a provocation uncalled for, and instead they count you as a traitor, they count you as an enemy, your spouse sees you as an enemy, your children see you as, whereas you had good intentions. This is a cry of a king who wants to comfort another nation and is being insulted. So you see David talking about, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. That's Psalm 20 for you. As long as there has been armies and weapons, nations have boasted of their power, but such power does not last. Throughout history, empires and kingdoms have risen to great power only to vanish in the, in the dust. So in Psalm 20, 6 to 8, now this I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand. David, however, knew that true might of his nation was not in weaponry, but in worship, not in firepower, but in God's power, because God alone can preserve a nation or an individual. Be sure your confidence is in God who gives eternal victory. Whom do you trust? I want to give you the takeaway now. Psalm 20, the assurance of God's saving work. In Matthew 10, 19 through 20, but when they arrest you, Christ is giving us, giving us these promises. Do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that, that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Look at Stephen, young man filled with the Holy Spirit. Try to convince his audience before they knew it, Saul, Saul and others have gathered around. He never knew they were going to stone him that day. He went out as usual. These are surprises for you from Satan, surprise attacks. 
before he knew it, they have taken him outside, stoned him to death. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you'll be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. And in John 16, the encouragement comes. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. David didn't have these assurances written in the scriptures, but he knew his God. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Some of us, we came into the church. We didn't know that the church was a hospital of sinners. We didn't know. Some of us thought the church was, oh, it's heaven, heaven. The people are saints. So when we meet people who have been baptized before us, we treat them as Peter, John. Oh, this is my spiritual leader. But when we see them speaking to us with all the enmity you can ever think of, the shock is too much for some of us. It's too much. It's devastating. So, okay, I'm no more going to church. I never knew the church was like this. Just like David, young man, a king now. You sent people out to comfort the, 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 the nation of your friend who has died. And they treat you as an enemy. And before you know it, a war is going to be fought. And as we are talking, over 40,000 people are killed because of misinformation. Misinformation from the people of that king said, no, these people are spies. Has it happened to you? You slept well, you wake up in the morning. Before you know it, in your own house, in your own family, you are being treated as an enemy. On the Sabbath, you dress to go to church. There was a time for a call. A call is made for a mass. You make a remark. Your simple remark that has no bearing with hostility is being treated as if you're an enemy of God. And before you know it, everybody's attacking you left and right and center. How do you feel? Yeah, God, Jesus is encouraging us. So here they say, building on the rock. Second Corinthians 10 says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So don't worry about try to answer false accusations. Don't worry. That's what Christ is telling us. So this shock that we get from our own brothers and sisters in Christ ought not to be because Christ has warned us that if they treated him, they will treat us even worse. So the, 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 the Psalm 20 is a prayer you offer on behalf of King David when he goes to war. When he goes to war, he say, ah, you will now begin to say, okay, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. David is in trouble for no reason. So when you fall into trouble, ladies and gentlemen, don't be surprised. Satan is tearing up an attack against you. Job was already in trouble. All of a sudden, everything is God is, is going. Everything is God is going. Children are gone all in one day. Ten children in one day. Property all gone. Camels, asset all destroyed one day. Which insurance company will insure you for all this? No insurance company. Then came the wife. Pause God and let us die. I'm tired. I'm tired. The wife was not the one speaking. Satan is speaking through the wife. May God give our men the wisdom to know when Satan is speaking through their wives. May God give our sisters the wisdom to know when Satan is speaking through their husband. Instead of making it a personal attack, know that the enemy has come to your family. The enemy has come to your church. May God give us wisdom in the church to know, to treat other people fairly. This is my request this morning. As David handled and left everything in the hand of God, 
when he heard that the armies were gathering around him, David trusted in the Lord and not in weaponry, not in attacks. Okay, don't worry, we will deal with him. We will deal with her and we'll begin to fight ourselves. May God give us the Holy Spirit to know where the trouble is coming from and to respond accordingly. This is my prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.